All right, guys. Thank you so much. Let's welcome my guest, rapper, entrepreneur, but also producer. Guys, let's welcome Mr. B Funk back in the studio today. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up, Candy? Sorry, we had some technical difficulties, but we're in the house now. So, awesome. uh, glad to be on the show today. Excited to um, take part in your in your in your series and conversation, and maybe it helps somebody that's trying to push forward in uh, in today's environment. Okay, well, let's talk about a B Funk. Now, I know I met you back in the mid '90s. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and um, are you originally from Indianapolis? Yeah, I'm originally from Indianapolis, born and raised in Indianapolis, okay. east side of Indianapolis, and um, you know, it's been been in music pretty much my my since a very very young age, before teenage years, because you know, I grew up watching my dad perform and different things. They had the you know the shy lights type of group going. They had a hit out on the west coast, so you know they had a nice little situation going. So that kind of works you know, spearheaded the music, the music um, in me. So it's deep embedded. So that's why, you know, uh, I continue and, and, and got us into it. Cause you know, you grow up watching your, your dad performing in, in the house and rehearsing and you know, all of that type of stuff. And, you know, they did have hits, they had a hit out there. So, you know, they had some big time offers out there. So it was good um, to see that. And that was just, like I said, that was embedded. So, you know, that's where the music came from, and, you know, that's where that that portion of it was, and then you know, I had a natural entrepreneurial spirit as well, so then those two collide, and you see what happens. Okay, well, so, now, what happens. okay so now, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, now, I know you, and is that the reason why you have that style, that style that you had or that you still have to today because of your yeah. father and, and his, okay. All right, I was I was wondering because guys, B Funk has a different style to him versus what you usually see when it comes to a rapper. Um, let's talk a little bit about that now. I now tell us a little bit about the style at the time and does it apply today? Well, I mean, I would look at it as a um, it was a mix, you know, with some of the classics, and then I had an older brother who always was listening to a lot of funk as well. So, you know, we're talking about Zap and you're talking about your George Clinton's and so we talking about George Clinton's and Zap and you're talking about, you know, Al Hudson in one way, all those funk guys and then we talking, you know, the classic guys, Temptation and Shy Light. So that was just like a mixture. And so that's what was my that's what I grew up listening to. So when it's time for me to start rapping and then I'm like, you know, they had some West Coast funk and I was already embedded in that because when I put my name, because I used to have a different rap name when I first started rapping. So, and then I changed it because I'm like, man, I'm funky. So I said, be funk, you know. What's the so B you stand came, for? Uh, that's my nickname, uh, BIM. So that's my nickname. So uh, it's the capital, it's the first letter of my nickname. So okay. anybody who knows me knows that name right there. <laughs> and so you know, in the street, that's what they know me by. So, um, but no, that that mixture came, and so when I did, got into when I was rapping, I mean, I had this, you know, flair in my voice. You know, I got this delivery. My voice is, you know, I got the, the, the bootsy type of flair. A lot of my songs and different things like that. So, I got a certain uh, the funk really did kind of transcend through those songs. So that's what inspired me. You know, you of course you know on my record I went and got Zap. I actually did songs with Zap. I didn't do any sampling or anything like that. I did it like big boys do it, you know. I went and got the group and we did the song. So I got Zap on there. I got Al Hudson one way on there. And I got a song with the Shy Lights. I did, uh, the only thing I had sampled was, it wasn't even really sampled. It was a, some George Clinton material that had never been released. So I got that from Detroit. The one way guys, they hooked me up with that. Al Hudson one way. So. I actually did these songs with these people. And then I had, you know, production by George Clinton's, um, his, his band, um, a lot of pro producers in his band that we talked about produced for Too Short and produced for Seal and uh, uh, Maxwell, all those type things. So, you know, 
all of that. When I did it, I did it. I didn't, you know, play around and go sample and stuff. I went and actually did the material with the actual groups, with the actual producers from these platinum groups, funk groups, you know. So, and even like I said, Shy Lights was a classic. The only one I did with the classic singer would be Shy Lights, but you know. So that's kind of where it evolved from, and then it, you know, went into my music, you know, and then I more I got a little straight edge on my music. So, you know, my content as far as my lyrical content kind of gives you, you know, my little experience in life, <laughs> you know, then how how that just, you know, evolved there. But and even was interesting because my when I recorded with Zap or I recorded with Al Hudson one way, I took my brother with me, who actually was the one listening to that music back in the eighties. And then when I went and recorded with Shy Lights, I took my father with me. So, you know, he was in those his studio sessions. So it was like, it was real deep. It was real deep. Those studio sessions with those guys, those actual artists that was doing that, they do the platinum guys out there, you know. And I took them guys that influenced me, my father, my brother. You know, they influenced me that music all the way coming up. So I took them to those sessions so they could experience them live and see what we do, you know. Wow, that's so, nice. I know that was, man, a dream come true for your father. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was a good time. What year did you actually tap in and go hard here in Indianapolis? I went hard about 2001, 2002. From 2000 to 2002, I went extremely hard. And that's when I you know, started, you know, putting the record together, putting all of that. Because actually, I was, I, I went to Detroit and, you know, I had a cousin up there. We, they had the label, starting the label. So I had, kind of plugged into that and I figured, okay, Detroit got a lot of music history. So I said, let me just plug Naptown into Detroit. And my cousin was originally from Nap, so he lives in Detroit now, but then we hooked up with some people up in Detroit and kind of plugged up Nap to Detroit and kind of had Mo House Records. So that was based in Detroit, but most or half the ownership, over half the ownership was from Indianapolis. So, you know, we, um, you know, that's how, that's how, that was the, you know, the launching pad. And that was um, how um, we went about it right at, you know, right at 2002, I think was the year that when my record dropped. And what we did is we got a, what I did is I brought in a, um, a CEO, because, you know, when you rap, this is a thing about young rappers. And, and when you're doing music and your business, you got to make sure you have somebody there to buffer the situation. So, you know, in your music, you got a lot of passion in your music. So you might be biased to business decisions, okay? So instead of, and since I know I learned it as I was growing, going through the, the um, process, I'm like, okay, I'm, my music is, I'm really tied to it. And I'm, I may have some bias in some of these business decisions. So I brought in the CEO that was just from the business and entertainment sector, but it was all about the business. wasn't a, wasn't an artist or nothing like that. It was a promoter and a business guy. So I brought him in as CEO, and then actually became part owner of the company as well. And so I was able, able to just be the artist, and I was handling business and doing that. But I didn't have to make those type of decisions. I was able to kind of, you know, not let that bias kind of make bad decisions, but. What happened is we ended up linking up and getting a major distribution deal, um, independent distribution deal with Koch. Back then, Koch was doing, you know, nice independent distribution. Um, it wasn't like a deal where you got major marketing and things like that. We were spending our own money. So, you know, we spent over $300,000 doing this thing, you know. So it wasn't, a, wasn't small fries, you know, it was a real deal. And this is out of pocket. So... You know, what we doing was, like I said, we got with Koch, that was an independent distributor. And in, in 02, um, that's when they, you know, we made it like the um, B-Funk, Funk related. And they had, like I said, all those groups on it. And it was, a, like you said, it was a very distinct project. You, you know, you experienced it. Um, so it was a very distinct project. Different. I, I think the closest thing to any of it was probably snooping them out on the West Coast because they was doing some funk too out there. Uh, and, 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 and of course, like I said, I, I named myself
to be punk before I even knew who a Snoop or any of them dudes were. So, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like I was going, you know, in that route. Of course, the, the mainstream music and Tupac and Snoop, all of them guys was out there, they were my peers. So, still, it was out there. But when I became B Funk, I didn't, I don't even know if G Funk was around. I don't even know, know what was going on with G Funk, you know what I'm saying? But I became B Funk because I listened. I was a very young age. I wasn't even 18 years old. So, it's like, okay. So, was your target audience with all of that funk? Was was your target audience the older generation, or were you still not trying not, to mix and mingle with your age and the older mm-hmm. generation? It was not the older generation because my content was not older content. It was straight up relevant content. Um, you know, it was. You know, we was in the game, so it was not nothing that you're going to hear outside of my style was older okay my style had that funk style but the lyrics and the content that i was spitting is was not that my content was just what you're going to hear out there you know what i'm saying my story what i was going through so i wasn't going through no old school stuff i was going through you know real deal stuff you know what i'm saying actually we was on a, you know my content was at a different level because everybody ain't you know didn't, didn't hadn't hadn't been able to um, you know kind of experience some of the things that I experienced. You know, you got to figure if we dropping three hundred grand, you better believe we doing something to talk about. Come on now, come on now, now, now. <laughs> What was your ultimate goal when you got into all of this? And obviously, you putting your money behind your your own project. What was your ultimate goal? And did you accomplish well, my, it? My ultimate goal was to get the label off the ground and get, I, I really wanted to dwarf into, you know, something like a, you gotta figure out, cause I had several artists. I had all, all the artists I was dealing with, I put them all on my record because the idea was to get the label going and have a series of, of artists. So I put the singers on there, I put the other rappers on there. I had a lot of different artists on my project so that would launch, you know, us all. So I really wanted to end up maybe doing, like I said, doing my projects here and there, but really, putting out other artists. So I really kind of slid into more management after that. But what happened is what I found is that first, you know, like I said, I learned a lot, you know what I'm saying? Because I put a lot into, into production, a lot into building the company structure, and a lot into that. When we really needed the marketing was the thing. Okay. So if you know, like I said, we had a distribution deal with Cox, but that didn't come to market and that came with all distribution. We nationwide, I'm running Borders bookstores all across the country, everywhere. I'm in mean, every store in the country. That's when, you know, before the digital age. So I'm in every store across the country. I went and did promotional retail tours with the guy that took Tupac on his tour the first time um, to put his stuff in retail. That's the guy that we had doing me. I, we went and did 30 cities in about shoot three months man we hit every record store in about 30 different cities in three months driving you know we was out there getting it like that but um you know uh, i had a publisher's so idea had articles in billboard magazine uh, back then uh, word up and then word up was fizzled out but that billboard magazine was pretty huge but all that stuff costs money you know what i'm saying then i brought in publishers i had uh, independent produce independent um uh producers like market but as far as when it was really time to drop you talking about another two hundred and fifty thousand dollars so for marketing so that was necessary okay so it sounds yeah. like budget wise it really wasn't there for you to capitalize on that opportunity but or get back right the front end we got to the we got to the front end we got everything to the front end when it came to that back end it just wasn't there to really, really make the push we needed to make. So, you know, that's where that's where that came in at. And that's how that that's how they evolved. But what I learned is, and this is something I like I said, I'll, and even I think it still exists today. I think that um, what I learned is, okay, the front end, and you know, all that it's not necessary. It's necessary, you know, okay, I would have had I say I'm if I learn to it, if I want to teach somebody else something to say, understand that marketing element, master the marketing. Because if you got trash, you can market. They do, they market trash into something 
out here. So what I'm saying is don't put so much into your have outstanding production. Don't don't get me wrong. Man. You want a high heat, you want heat. But you don't have to do put everything together on the front end. You can have one hot song or two or three hot songs and then focus on your marketing, master the market. Because I can say I got one hot song, I'm trying to market that. And I'm not, I can keep rotating that and put my put my resources on the marketing side. Don't put your resources all on the production side. Put your resources on the marketing side. Okay, make sure you can, your know, production is high power. You know, make sure you got high heat production, but don't go, you know, like I said, don't dump into putting a label together, putting all this together. You can do all of that for a little bit of nothing and look and look presentable. Make sure your high power production, only don't go with 15 songs, have three, two or three, and then focus on marketing because the marketing is where it's all at. That's, That's what I learned. I can definitely that. go ahead. That's it. That's I, it. I can definitely tell you still have some passion about it. The way you was hitting the table, I can definitely get all of that back up in these earphones. Okay. I'm a rapper, you know I'm animated. I'm gonna always be that way. I'm still putting this lyrics down. I'm doing my thing. I always put my thing. I'm not ever gonna stop. You know, it's what it is. Because you, know, you always got stuff coming out to you know. So again, bottom line: if you don't have a budget or investors, you're only going to get so far. But then I'm sure as an artist, because I always look at this all the time, and I'm sure it still happens. You have an artist that, hey, can you get on my song? You're on the song, but then what happens to that song? What do you do? What are you doing with that song? Because you don't have the budget, you can't market, and therefore that artist, I mean, they got paid, I'm sure, depending on <laughs> whatever um but it's yep. like now you're sitting on a project that you can't even get out and about because you don't have that funding don't got that back in so so kind of look at that going in have your back in it's like it's like you want to know your uh like it's, it's almost like you know and this has been said at the end sometimes paint the final picture and then back into that so know your back end is what you want. That marketing is the even today. I don't care how much the game changed. Marketing is it, and I believe now you got a cheaper marketing nowadays. So I think mean, nowadays you you're gonna have a better crack at that marketing, you know. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, hey, if I had to do it again, if I said I would have put one or two beautiful features together and just put everything else in marketing, you know, that's where the shot was. Especially having national national distribution already, you know that was that's you know where it was right there. Uh, hey, look, you don't answered all the daggone questions. I think this this is over with. <laughs> but <laughs> no, so, but that's because uh, you know the thing that I, I mean we we were on stage, we did our thing a few times, and I, I really believed in the project. But then it's like industry was changing as well. So a lot of that stuff was no longer important or people didn't see that as necessary. Um, yep. And then here in Indianapolis, what I remember is that it got to be in the point where a lot of, even your national recording artists, a lot of them weren't coming here either because it seems like the only way that I noticed that some of the artists who were trying to do their thing was to try to get exposure was to open up for the national recording artists. But then some of them start, like not coming around as well it just seemed like the market just changed so much that what was happening yesterday didn't apply to that particular point in time at that time so it was like dang that was like almost the only way you guys could do your thing because i know we did that yeah we did it because we had we had a we had a we had a platform to be able to do that everybody could just open up you know i opened up this farm for i love for most people in the industry at that point in time most of a lot of artists back then but like I said, it's still, you got to have that, that, it's just that sales push. You got to follow that up with things. You know what I'm saying? We was attacking radio, but you got to be able to follow it up, with, you know, on a very powerful level. So, you know, be realistic with yourself and make sure that, you know, you operate. Like I said, if I was to start again today, I would master the marketing process. I told some younger artists that my daughter did with it. Was like, I was like, and I told them, I'm not necessarily that they listen to me because, you know, everybody's got this passion about their music. I'm going to just put the record out and say, listen, you should master the marketing game while you're putting your record out. So you should offer a marketing service along with putting your record out. 
so that you can be master in that part. Because that is the critical part. That is the part. That is the part. No question. Do you think that's, that's also... Your, go ahead, repeat yourself. I said, that's your difference right there. So do you think... Being able to, being able to market yourself. Do you think that that's pretty much, in your opinion, uh, what happened to a lot of the artists around that time here in Indianapolis? Um, yeah, it, the ones that first, like I said, you gotta have that high power. Don't come with the, don't come weak. If you come whack, then you just whack. You're gonna be whack. You can't even. Some people do market whack, pretty. You know, the big, big old, big old honcho. They didn't market whack before, but don't come whack. You know, make sure you you strong. Make sure you got some high power, some high heat. Okay, make sure you got that. Just, you know, get you some producers that have been out there doing some things. Nowadays, they're not charging as much. Even a platinum producer is not beating you up on the front end right now. I mean, you got some really good producers out there that's not known. You know, so it's a lot of high heat out there in production. So you don't even got to worry about that part. It's there now. Back in the day, I always had to deal with platinum. I had a lot of platinum producers on my record, but I had to pay them. It wasn't like now where you can go online and find a producer that's producing at the same level as one of the hot guys out there right now. There's a lot of them doing that. So today is just a, you know, you can get your high heat pretty easily and then put, you know, bring your content, you know, carve out your market. Like I said, that marketing is, 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 the, is the thing, you know, um, that's the critical part. You know, that's the pr critical part is to make sure, don't come with the heat. But don't put all your eggs in that into that. Put your make sure you master that marketing and do that. Because like I said, we had a, we had an opportunity to do it um, before. That, like when, when we was when we was writing this the story of the content that I was dropping on that album. We wrote that material. We lived that material back in you say ninety ninety two to ninety five ninety six something like that. You know, and back then it had. You know, at that point in time, we we, we could have dropped, uh, we didn't drop albums back at that time, but we was out there, you're talking E-40 and them dropping, Too Short, you're talking all those guys out there. We were out here, you know, living it. You know, our rappers was rapping it, we was living it, and could rap it at a high level, but we didn't ever go and drop that material. We had dealt with Death Row back in the day, and um, did some things there. Um, I'm on the, 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 the was and Crip take out out 1994. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, the, the second one that they did down to out there. I was able to get on that material. I had a song that went on the Billboard top 20 from that, from that, um, from that project. So, you know, I had a, we had our chances in there doing that. But like I said, we didn't capitalize on that. Again, pushing that and going to marketing, we kind of just stayed doing what we was doing. But when I put my record out, that was telling that story. You see what I'm saying? That was okay. telling the story that I didn't dealt with, you know, these people. I'm on this project, this major project, you know what I'm saying? That, 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 that was West Coast. We was out in the West Coast when they was at their height, you know what I'm saying? And we had situations going. I won't go into that because that ain't something that you ready to drop, right? That ain't a story we about to tell right this moment. You know? And that's more of something that is going to be told in the future. But we had some things going back then. Well, that was pre my album, you know. That was pre before your album. Okay, so let me ask you. Pre my album. The, okay, so here's I don't want I want to make sure that I give the proper credit that's due. Now, I introduced you as a rapper. Um are you still rapping? I still rap. I still got I still got a uh, music out on I got a um well, what I'm doing now I have a uh, it's called Jewel. It's like Jewel music. So it's like more music than just dropping jewels like I'm dropping right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm dropping jewels right now. But my music nowadays, that's what it does. It just drops jewels. So I got something called Drop a Jewel. I got a um, YouTube channel that's called Drop a Jewel. All my music is on there. It's Drop a Jewel, the YouTube channel. And it uh, has my, um, all my music on there from today. I dropped a, a, like a, a EP with, uh, it's called Drop a Jewel. And it just has some somewhere where I'm at now, you know what I'm saying? Again, it's the material that, you know, they got to really have their ears open. It ain't for everybody because, you know, you got to have your ears open um, if you want to 
you know, if you want, if you want to be able to latch on to that one, but uh, it's hot, it's hot stuff, you know what I'm saying? And as far as um, I did like a little spotlight cast where I would spotlight different jewels from back in, from all the way from back in, you know, past rap to now, and just you know, like jewels as far as you know, people just, you know, letting they just spitting their real life on there, you know what I'm saying? The jewels and certain things is going to be a jewel. If I can spit some real life game to you and give you some information that you can go forward with, then, you know, and it may not all be positive. It may be some stuff that I went through that was rugged, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you this ruggedness, whose, life is, you can, whose life is always yeah. positive or always yeah. on the right track, so. <laughs> yeah, but you were able to take it where I can say I can give you this, but this wasn't necessarily all the way positive experience, but it was something that was rugged, but at the same time, you see me grow with it, you know, at the same time. So I'm talking about songs, you know, talking DMX, you're talking, um, if they go, you know, you'll you see, I did a, a lot of series of spotlight casts from it, and I'm just, I just listen to different artists, and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's good. He has some vulnerability in that, you know what I'm saying? I spit my game, I knew that, what was happening, and then I know I showed my growth in the song as well. So I showed my weakness, and I showed my growth from that weakness. You know what I'm saying? Or I show my ruggedness and I show my growth from that ruggedness, where I go from, where I take it to. So okay. that's just dual music to me. You know, I think that's something the industry, you know, needed. That's what, you know, right now in music, that's my only thing I dealt with. Um, aside from that, the only other thing I really, my mind would be set on musically is um, just kids. We haven't um, got no, we don't have any use, you know, hip hop going on right now. So, that's another thing. That's where, you know, another segment of the jewel music that I want to, you know, catapult upon to because we don't have any young artists. We don't have any young artists, young, young artists. You know, I got boys, young boys. So, you know, I got a nine year old and a 14 year old that are really, you know, they got to listen to all this gang banging music. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, where, where is that go? We used to have some Bow Wow and some Romeo around here. Where they at? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, the, the industry has artists. changed. The artists have changed. Yeah. You know, sometimes Not it's fair. yeah, get best to get yeah. get some of that back. But, you know, yes, here we, we are. Some of that back. Say that again. I said we need some of that back. So that's yeah. something that, you know, I'm kind of sticking my head into and trying to, you know, see what I can find on that youth side. Well, I tell you what, unfortunately, we are out of time. So um, just let everybody know once again how they can follow you, how they can reach you and follow you on your journey. I know once again, we were talking about the Indianapolis talent, trying to figure out what happened. Wh why didn't they make it? So I appreciate you, B-Funk, for coming on. Tell everybody how they can reach you and follow you. All right, B-Funk, I got, a, um, I got, like I said, I got a YouTube channel. It's uh, called uh, Drop a Jewel. Just type in that YouTube, Drop a Jewel. It's a spotlight cast. That's my YouTube channel, and um, just take a look from there. Be from Drop a Jewel. I'll drop the EP on there as well, so you can go to that Drop a Jewel on the, on the YouTube, and that's where you'll be able to follow anything I'm doing nowadays. Okay, well, again, once again, B-Funk, thank you so much for dropping in. Right. Well, once again, guys, we had a little technical difficulties in the very, very beginning, but we, we got it right. We got it going on. Guys, right. make sure that you subscribe, hit the notification button to the YouTube page, Candy Productions 2, capital C and the number 2. Follow the Candy Instagram show page, and that is called Candy Talk Show. Guys, I'm telling you, we have some stuff coming up. You know, once again, I've always said this. I don't know sometimes what's going to happen, but stay tuned, follow, subscribe, like, comment, share, and uh, we are out of here. So, th guys, thank you so much. Be Funk, thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.